it's really concerning what people are eating. They're ordering the food or pre-cooked food. And that's very concerning because I don't know actually what I'm eating and people don't think about it. We are not an assembly of spare parts. Mm. We are an organism. You have to, to ask the patients a lot of questions and then you can find the answer not by giving drugs, but fixing the problem. It's not about losing some kilos just on the scale. We have to talk about a lifestyle change. Mm. Yeah? Oh my God, I look at the scale, I didn't lose any weight. Mm -hmm. Let's look in the mirror. Our immune system is like an army. It's, it's not the, the, the treatment which, is sa which saves your life. It's your own body and your own immune system. So it was the connection between gut and brain, physical and mental, is connected. We cannot separate this. In this and this case, with this and this gene expression, you need this and this uh, therapy, mm. which is, let's say, 60% successful. But what about the 40%? This week on the Tiger Podcast, we'll be shattering misconceptions about the healthcare industry. Join us as we dive into a captivating conversation with the brilliant minds behind Miskoan Health Clinic, Dr. Wasoli and Dr. Andy, whose decades of experience and novel approaches are revolutionizing the industry. Get ready to debunk popular health myths, uncover the real reasons behind weight loss failures, dive into the mind-body clinical connection, and explore revolutionary insights into integrative cancer care. Stay tuned for a journey that challenges conventional wisdom and empowers you to take control of your health. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Wasoli and Dr. Andy. Well, all right, guys. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tiger Podcast. I am joined today by Dr. Wasoli and Dr. Andy over here at the Miskawan Health Clinic in uh, Bangkok, beautiful Bangkok. Uh, before we begin, I would love to hear a quick introduction from uh, both of you about how you got into this line of work. So, Dr. Wasoli, take us away. Yeah, my name is uh, Johannes Wasoli. Mm -hmm. I used to be a doctor for intensive care and for anesthesia and mm -hmm. for I worked for the air rescue in Germany I'm a specialist for diving and hyperbaric medicine and now I'm doing functional medicine mm -hmm. and uh, you probably would like to know why yeah. and I think I will tell you that later mm -hmm. um, because it's a it's a longer story <laughs> all right well then for now Dr. Andy please introduce yourself Yes, hi, I'm Dr. Andy. Mm. I'm also from Germany mm. and I'm a doctor of physical therapy and rehabilitation, specialized in sports medicine. I worked in different rehabilitation centers, universities, and I worked in professional football in Germany, so the best football league in the world, mm. Bundesliga. Mm. And I'm now since 12 years here in Thailand. And I came here to work for the Thai national team. Mm. So I worked with the team, won the Suzuki Cup, Sea Games, <coughs> went to the Asian Games, and I worked for Muang Tong, Bangkok United, so treating all the superstars here in Thailand. Mm. And I'm now since three and a half years with Miss Kavan Health Group. Wonderful. I could hear that uh, German pride when you were talking about the Bundesliga over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and I think there's no denying, actually, that. Now, yes. um, a, qu a question for both of you. How did you guys uh, end up with uh, Misko on here? How did you establish this uh, clinic? And uh, what is the mission that you're trying to accomplish here? We are uh, offering here functional medicine. Mm. And that is my story. I started, as I said before, as an anesthetist and all that kind of uh, stuff. And I did that for 30 years. Mm. And beside that, I found out that our conventional medicine is not uh, meeting what we are need, what we are needing mm -hmm. because uh, we are looking at different organs like heart there's a heart specialist brain there's a brain specialist lung a lung specialist but nobody realizes that it is all it, it it's connected with each other mm -hmm. and what we are doing here is try to find out in general what's not in order and not mm -hmm. only in parts because we are not an assembly of spare parts. Mm. We are an organism. Uh, and an organism which is working with all its cells together mm. to keep us alive. 
And that is what we want to provide here. And I can tell you my, my own story. I started as a baby already with a neurodermitis, a very bad one. I was really sick as a baby already. Mm. Then the symptoms switched to a lot of other allergies. I was very hyperactive. Mm. I had to go to a boarding school with 10 already because I was too bad at home. <laughs> <laughs> a menace. <laughs> a menace, yes. yeah. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then when I was 20, I got a, a colitis, a very bad mm. ulcerous colitis. And um, I had that for 30 years. I was treated in the conventional way with cortisone and all that stuff. Mm. And then with 50, I found out that, have, I, that I have a food intolerance, that I mm. couldn't eat milk and, and uh, gluten and, and, and uh, eggs. Mm. And I did a diet. After six weeks, everything was gone. And then I started thinking. Uh, as an, and uh, I thought there must be many, many people who have the same fate, the same problems. Mm. And I found them, thousands. Wow. So that opened up the uh, a whole new path for you then in that case, right? Uh, I love what you're saying about like we're not doctors can be organic mechanics, right? Like they're just yeah, yeah. looking at you like a, an engine or something like that. But it's a holistic approach, probably that includes also things like mental health and, and stress management, things like that too. That of course, can have a deep impact on our physical health. Of course, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not that we are homeopaths. Mm. We are working with the, with the, uh, uh, the best scientific uh, 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 labs, and 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 uh, we are doing molecular biology because that is the the basic of of everything of life, mm -hmm. and that we go very very deep. It's not it's not just uh, you know like a, a voodoo. It's 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 <laughs> it's real science. Yeah, I think that that happens a lot, especially when you hear uh, these kinds of terms get thrown around people, uh, you know, it becomes inaccessible for people who are used to more traditional approaches, right? And that that's, you know, the the conventional knowledge uh, that people think they have, you know, they're most people are not medical experts, and they don't understand these concepts. And uh, it's important to uh, elucidate those for people so they can understand there are options for you, especially when uh, other uh, traditional roots have failed like they failed you uh throughout your life there that's uh an, an unfortunate story but i'm glad that you found solutions as well well i'd like to move on to some of our uh more specific topics going on now we're going to start with uh something that is very concerning to me because uh the miraculous rejuvenation of youth is soon leaving me and uh now uh i'm very concerned about my my weight and weight loss so I wanted to ask you guys uh, a little bit about the, the misconceptions about how you can stay fit and healthy going into, like, I'm, I'm in my late, mid, I don't want to say exactly how old I am, but, uh, you know, I'm getting older. And uh, this is a particular concern for me. So uh, I wanted to ask you guys, why do you think there, there are so many fad diets out there, right? Like, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, everybody's sort of sometimes snake oil, things like that. Um, what do you think is the, uh, the, the damage of that? And uh, what do you think are some effective ways to manage your weight as you are getting older? Mm -mm. Well, I think that is your turn. <laughs> because with your own experience, you told me yeah. uh, uh, half an hour ago. Yeah. Mm. So, um, of course, if we look at the nutrition nowadays, mm. it's really concerning what mm. people are eating. And what I realize also that um, the people are not cooking themselves anymore. Mm. They are ordering the food or pre-cooked food. And that's very concerning because I don't know actually what I'm eating. Mm. Yeah. And people don't think about it. Oof, guilty. All right. Well, this is a big problem for me. The convenience here in Bangkok and uh, around in Thailand, this is something that many expats fall into that trap a little bit. It's cheap. It's easy. Yes. But again... You don't know but what's coming in. Also, Thai people are not cooking so much anymore, like mm -hmm. it was 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's so easy, but for sure it's not healthy because mm -hmm. we don't know what we put into our body. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you think about it, you put something into your body and you don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. That's very strange. Yeah. I think the big problem nowadays with weight loss is that most people think, oh, my God. I want to lose now a few kilos and they want to do something extreme. Mm -hmm. So first of all, when we talk about weight loss, it's not about losing some kilos just on the scale. Mm -hmm. For example, if I reduce my body fat by two kilos, but maybe I'm able through the right exercises and the right nutrition supplementation to build some muscles, 
Mm. So I lose two kilos fat. I gain maybe two kilos muscles. Mm -hmm. My weight is the same. Oh my God, I look at the scale. I didn't lose any weight. Mm -hmm. Let's look in the mirror. You look totally different. Your body composition is different and your health status is completely different. Mm. Yeah? And what we are trying to do here in Miskavan is we want to change and help you to change your lifestyle. Mm. Yeah? And it's not about a quick fix. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a long-term approach, right? Well, uh, we were talking just before the podcast, Dr. Vasoli, about your own experiences with, uh, uh, you know, problems with diet and how it's affected your health. Uh, so uh, can you tell me how was that journey and uh, what have you done to improve your, your uh, you know, what you're putting into your body, I guess? Yeah, when people come and ask me what is the best food, uh, uh, so I say I don't know. Hmm. It's because it's very individual. And in my mm -hmm. case, I had this uh, uh, kind of inflammation, this immune reaction against uh, uh, certain foods. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can, uh, for me, gluten is deadly. Mm. For other people, uh, a full, uh, uh, full corn diet, how do you say that? Uh, uh, Oats or, or something, you know, with a, something very healthy. But if it's yeah. gluten in it, 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 it's damaging my body. And mm -hmm. so what is the best diet for me? That's a lot of veg vegetables, also meat and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. poultry and fish mm -hmm. and, uh, and not so many carbs. Mm -hmm. And of course, I avoid milk. I cannot uh, eat mm -hmm. milk products. No dairy. Uh, no, no dairy no, uh, and no eggs. And mm. so if I keep the diet, I'm healthy. If not, I, I, I'm really sick. I, I, so that is very individual. Uh, that, that's exactly right, right? It is very individual and every person's body type is so different, but not everyone's an expert as well too. So it's important to have these consultations. But yeah. that's exactly why we are here. Mm -hmm. And it's important to find out mm -hmm. what do you need? What does your body need? What is good for you? What is bad for mm -hmm. you? And that's why we have a lot of very specific <clears throat> tests mm -hmm. where we can analyze your blood, we can analyze your gut health, we can analyze food intolerances, mm. and then you get your individual program. Mm. And that makes the big difference. It's not a one fits it all. Yeah. Yeah. It, it seems like a lot of people are out there to sell a book or sell uh, some concept that they think, oh, this has broad ramifications, everybody can use this. That's just not the case. No. <laughs> think, yeah. And now we, we even we are working a lot in this field of our food intolerances. Mm -hmm. It's getting worse and worse, the situation. Mm -hmm. And now we found a, 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 a very specific intolerance of red meat. Mm -hmm. um, there, that is uh, 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 started by ticks. If, oh, a, yeah. if, a, if, a, if a tick bites, uh, do you know that? that uh, I've heard of this, yeah. yeah. And if a tick bites uh, 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 an animal or a, a man with the red meat and bites another person, a, a man, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that develops an intolerance against, uh, it is called Agal syndrome. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty new and it, it came from the USA. Uh, because there were the certain ticks living, and and uh, and that can really affect you extremely. It co can lead to 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 dementia. Mm. Well, that, uh, that, no, you, <laughs> that sounds horrific. Uh, yeah, and I we believe, can test that. We can test that. That's fantastic. And that's yeah, easy. Yeah. I believe that came from like the Northeast too. Even Justin Bieber has been affected by this, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, what do you think these these changes in like our reaction to food? has been coming from? Is it just something that's been built up over generations? Is it something more recent? What do you think? It is closely connected with the gut microbiome mm -hmm. first and uh, the lots of processed foods. Mm. You know, we, we, we sometimes even, even don't know what's in there because they don't have to declare until it's, I think in Germany it ha has to be 1% of, of this food mm -hmm. and only then you have to declare what's in there. Mm. So there's even smaller and, amounts that they yeah, don't even need course. to tell you. Right? Yeah. The food industry, they know this. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what they have to do. Mm -hmm. they're in this, they're, their science is trying to make you consume as much of it as possible yeah, yeah. and uh, just re enjoy the flavors, right? Like yeah, I, yeah. I always talk about uh, the, the like McDonald's, for example, right? They have that stuff down to a science, how to just get people addicted to this kind of food 
even though there's no real regard for the health of the people consuming it. So uh, that's something that people need to take a little bit of individual responsibility for because they're not going to look out for you, right? You have to look out for yourself. So, uh, yeah, anyways. Absolutely, yeah. So, yeah, and when we talk about weight loss or let's mm -hmm. call it fat loss, mm -hmm. we have to talk about a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. yeah? Like I said, we want to lose fat, which nutrition is a very important part. And then it's a lot about exercise. We want to gain muscles and not lose muscles. Mm -hmm. And the big problem is from around 35 to 40 years old, <clears throat> we are losing automatically our muscles if we don't use them. Mm. And so we have to fight against this. And for that, of course, also we need then the right supplementation. We need enough protein, amino acids, vitamins, minerals to stay healthy. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we are doing and helping the people yeah. to stay healthy in a good shape use it or lose it right like that's a, a yeah. big thing I, I remember even my grandfather even almost up until uh he he passed was still exercising as much as he possibly could all the time pumping iron he called it and exactly. when he couldn't Arnold do that yeah. <laughs> exactly of <laughs> but course. you know this is um if you look now at all the research nowadays if you look at the uh, diseases if it is cancer cardiovascular diseases if we talk about prevention, there are three big pillars. If we talk about healing, mm -hmm. there are always three very easy pillars. It's nutrition, mm -hmm. exercise, movement, and being happy, healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. mental health. Mm -hmm. And these three things we can easily change in our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree completely. I think it's very, you know, it's so it's so fundamental. It's like intrinsically, we all know this, but uh, what what matters? So let me ask you that. How do you uh, keep that mindset? Because for so many people, like we know, well, I need to diet, I need to exercise, right? So how does one maintain the mindset and uh, the discipline to sort of keep with this lifestyle to make sure that you have a healthy body and a healthy mind? Hmm. Thoughts? That is mostly connected. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm <clears throat> doing a lot about the connection between gut, gut microbiome and mm -hmm. the brain. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, and I can uh, uh, tell you uh, one example from here, from Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, a boy, he had a, a bipolar disease mm -hmm. and was, was on, on drugs, on, on psychodrugs. And... Uh, couldn't study nothing, not go to school. And then he came and we saw that he had a, a, an extremely bad uh, uh, gut microbiome, especially the part which is feeding the brain mm -hmm. and, uh, and bad food intolerances. And he got on the diet and we fixed the gut and he's completely normal going to school and uh, has a normal life. And that is very simple. It's just gut and brain. Mm, uh, it's uh, uh, beautiful to hear that that you're able to solve these problems for people who maybe are at their wits end trying to figure out what's going on, what's wrong, the psychotropics weren't working or something like that. So back to the basics and uh, figuring out, diagnosing the problem properly, I think, is a big part that of the process. The mm -hmm. That is the point. And mm -hmm. another big point is, of course, goals. What mm -hmm. is your motivation? And mm -hmm. when we talk to the people, we <clears throat> always want to find out what, what is your goal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we will try to help you to achieve this. Mm -hmm. And then if you see the first progress, this is again, wow, positive. And then, yeah, it's getting much easier and mm -hmm. you want to get more and more. And you like the way you look now. You like the way you feel mm -hmm. the reaction of the people. You get your blood results then again. And oh, oh, now my blood results are better, oh, my blood pressure is better, I want to keep this. Mm. Yeah, so this is the positive mindset also. Uh, the, the the healthier lifestyle you're living, the happier you're going to be. It's it's a self-feeding loop, right? Like uh, an upward spiral, if you will. So yeah. There are so many more coming with uh, like a, 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 a minor depression. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, the, the solution is not uh, psychodrugs, mm -hmm. but is find out what it is. And then we are back to, uh, to, to, to food. Mm -hmm. If you have a food intolerance, you can develop, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Then you get fat. Then you, you uh, uh, don't, uh, in, in your gut, if it's sick, you cannot 
produce enough neurotransmitters mm. from the, the amino acids. So that's the next link to depression. Mm. And uh, the, it, the whole thing sometimes starts with the lack of hormones, which mm. are extremely important for the brain, for, for, for your uh, uh, mindset. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have to, to ask the patients a lot of questions. And then you can find the answer that but not by giving drugs, but fixing the, 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 the problem. For example, that's one, one uh, 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 example. A woman 50 years old, mm -hmm. yeah? in the morning she wakes up and has stiff hands. Mm -hmm. If she's unlucky, she is sent to a rheumatologist because that can be the first sign of rheumatism. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the, the whole thing starts with cortisone, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or she has a depression uh, and uh, she goes to the psychiatrist, gets a, a psycho drug, mm. doesn't feel better, but go, gets fatter. And so overweight and depression, that is the next loop. And so one after the other, she is treated, then the, the blood pressure goes up. And the woman tells you, well, I cannot believe that because when I was a, a young woman, I, I, I collapsed all the time because my blood pressure was too low. Hmm. Why could that be? And and so and but the solution is the hormones. Hmm. Very interesting. Like I think, and not a yeah. blood pressure pill. Yeah, that will not fix the the conventional way of 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 treating a, a menopausal woman without knowing that the hormones are the the problem mm -hmm. uh, will never ever be successful. It seems like as uh, consumers of medicine, a lot of people just want these miracle pills where you can just like pop <clears throat> a pill and all of a sudden I got a six pack or something like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. It's not how it's going to work, right? No. And uh, I, I, making the patients to understand that because so many people do trust medical experts, but so many medical experts don't really take the care and have the patients yep. to understand their patients uh, in a way where they can actually help them in a holistic fashion rather than just treating the symptoms one by one. Hmm. It's, it's a lot also about education. We want mm -hmm. to educate our mm -hmm. patients. And there was one case in our beautiful beachfront clinic in Koh Samui, where yes. we have a clinic directly at the beach. Mm -hmm. And I had a patient, middle of 50s, and he had neck problems. So I treated him. The next session he came, oh, I feel much better. I can turn my head. And we talked, but yeah. I had the feeling something is wrong. And mm. then he said, yeah, he has no energy and his wife want to go out. But he said, I'll go alone. I'm tired. And and I said, look, please, I want you to see one of our, of our functional medicine doctors. And maybe we have to check your blood, your hormones. Mm -hmm. And he said, OK, if you think. So we did all these tests and he had a big lack of some vitamins, minerals, and also his hormones were not in order. Mm. So we started fixing this. Mm -hmm. After 10 days, he called me and he said, my God, Andy, I feel to totally different. Yeah, I'm so full of energy. And half a year later, I met his wife and she said, oh, my God, thank you so much. I have my husband back. And yeah, so their whole life changed. And mm -hmm. these things have a big impact on your whole life mm -hmm. and on your family and yeah, on your happiness. Yeah, I, we, should, I, I, we should all be living healthier, happier lives. And uh, for, for so much of society, it seems like we're going the other way. So it's very important to understand your options, I think. Uh, you, you know, for me as a physiotherapist, I always was thinking like this and I always wanted to fix everything. Mm. But of course, I have limited resources and mm -hmm. I was always looking for doctors where I can work together. Mm -hmm. And now here at Miskavan, we can build this fantastic team and work all together mm -hmm. and really, really help the people in the long term. Yeah? That's a wonderful and mission and a wonderful that's goal. incredible, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to switch gears a little bit now because uh, uh, Dr. Wasoli, you've, uh, you, you've Got some opinions, and uh, I just want to ask you about uh, traditional cancer treatments that have been in the past. And <laughs> uh, why do you think that these things? Sorry, switching from the weight now to to um, it's, it affects so many people. Like uh, it's affected my family. Uh, how how are traditional treatments? Uh, you know, do you, do you see them as not being enough uh, to be able to uh, effectively treat uh, patients who are dealing with cancers? Yeah, that, you are so right. Um, 
I started with treating cancer patients or better patients with cancer. I hate mm. this word mm. cancer patient because that's already he's got a label on mm -hmm. uh, a very negative. But I say patients with cancer because mm -hmm. that is not cancer is in the middle. The patient is in the middle. Mm -hmm. And so what, what does conventional uh, uh, cancer therapy mean? That means kill the cancer cell. Mm -hmm. No matter what what you kill, what else you are killing around, mm -hmm. and sometimes only really knowing what you are doing, uh, because classical chemotherapies, for example, the, the the cancer cell has so many ways to to avoid it, mm -hmm. and and uh, so and cancer is not cancer. If the two of us have a prostate cancer, that will be a different one. Mm. Uh, and so that is why I started, I, I, I came to a cancer therapy uh, from another direction. So many people asked me, well, I have had uh, chemotherapy, I'm suffering very much, hair falling out, and I'm so exhausted and uh, immune system flat. And can you help me to rebuild my body? Mm. And so then I went deeper and deeper and I saw that the, the, the cancer therapy, which is based on a statistic, you know, you have a couple of studies that show, aha, in this and this case, with this and this gene expression, uh, you need this and this uh, therapy, mm. which is, let's say, 60% successful. But what about the 40% mm -hmm. who are left? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so I uh, went into this way to use molecular biology to, to identify the real characteristic of your cancer. Mm. And that is when we uh, we can uh, take out circulating tumor cells and can check them, which genes do they express, which are, are driving them into proliferation mm. and how we can switch it off. We test a lot of substances which uh, affect your cancer cell mm. and give us uh, uh, the, the, the means to treat your cancer cell. That's and that is a, a completely different approach. And of course, we don't forget the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have to, to make sure that there are all the vitamins, minerals there, the body needs to fight mm -hmm. and to detoxify itself. Yeah, of course. And, uh, and that, is, uh, that is our goal. And not to forget the immune system. Mm -hmm. well, the immune, our immune system is like an army. Uh, mm. You have the you have the the killer cells that maybe that's the air force, mm -hmm. which it's attacking first, and then you have the T cells that is the infantry, which has to go down after the air air raid, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and and so and so you have different parts of your immune system, which you have to feed and to to hatch, mm. so that they can do their job because it's it's not the the, the treatment which is sa which saves your life. It's your own body and your own immune system. That, that, I love the metaphor. It's very interesting. And uh, also treating it like, uh, you know, because uh, I, I think of uh, cancer treatment as traditionally being very monolithic, right? There's only a few options about how you can go and approach uh, the treatment. But I love the way that you're talking about, all right, what is your uh, specific case? What is required for your body? Um, that's that that's a tailor-made approach where it's going to have a much greater effect, I would imagine. Yeah, so, of course. Uh, uh, very interesting. What other... Um, are there any other critiques that you have about the, the current state of uh, how, how we treat uh, these patients? Uh, too mechanistic mm. and, and too much focused on the cancer cell mm -hmm. and not on the patient. And mm. that is the difference because, well, of course, we can poison a, a patient and hope that there's a many, a many cancer cells are dying. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, there is an approach. You have a, a certain kind of breast cancer. They mm -hmm. call it triple negative breast cancer. And then there's a guideline. First you have, in that case, first you have to, to, to do chemo, then radiation, and then you can operate when the tumor is smaller. Mm -hmm. But that means the tumor is smaller, of course, because you kill a lot of cancer cells. But the, the, the few which are left over, they are very, very aggressive mm. because they are the most, most, uh, uh, um, uh, let's Resilient. say, most aggressive uh, mm. uh, cancer cell. And they are many times resistant to normal chemotherapy or to radiation. Mm. And uh, so uh, that is, in my eyes, uh, uh, the, 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 a typical approach, mm -hmm. guideline based, and there's no left or right. Mm. And that is wrong. Mm. 
Fair enough. I know that the, the oncologists hate me for that, but <laughs> I still, I think it's still, I think that is true. So, how would you uh, address maybe skepticism from oncologists about your <laughs> approach? Or what would you say to them? Yeah, I let them come to Germany to my clinic mm. and 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 uh, shadow me for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take a look and see how it actually yeah, plays yeah, out. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any uh, particularly uh, success stories that uh, you could share with us? Yeah. Oh yes, well, for, <laughs> well, we have. We, we, uh, uh, next week, I think a patient is coming from from uh, uh, Sydney. She saw me in 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 in, in Germany, and she had a metastasizing uh, uh, melanoma, which mm -hmm. is very aggressive, very very dangerous. And uh, then uh, she came to. Well, I I, I t started the treatment, gave her the, the the treatments, the infusions with her to to Australia, but mm -hmm. nobody wanted to do that there. Mm. And then she came back to Samui and did the treatment there. And then we had uh, uh, recently we, we checked again the, the gene expression. It was uh, nearly nothing left. Mm. And uh, all these uh, uh, PET scans and showed no tumor. Wow. So incredible success recent as well. Yeah, I, I have a couple of patients like that. So, so do you find there's a lot of like uh, maybe political resistance uh, for people like uh, going through this route compared to the traditional methods? Yeah, there, there is one problem or, or a few problems. One problem is that um, the classical oncology is a cash cow mm. for many clinics. That, that is one reason. And of course, behind that, we have a very mighty pharmaceutical industry. Mm. They want to sell their stuff. And um, why? Because we, we are working with a lot of natural substances, mm -hmm. plant derived substances. And there are more, more coming. We have a, a lot of new ones in the pipeline. But the problem is the, 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 there are no patents mm. for natural stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's not interesting uh, to develop all that and then everybody can sell it. And money, so that money, is money. our, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that is <laughs> a lot of money behind uh, in that uh, market. And so we are, are, are struggling to, to, mm -hmm. to compete. We have to be successful. That's it. Let the success speak for itself. Yes. Now, as, as an American, this is something that is present in everybody's mind, like the cost of medicine, the cost of of uh, treating whatever and this is one of the things too we're also very bad about our preventative care as well so uh this is it's a compounding factor over there and now we've seen our age our our, our average lifespan has been in decline recently in recent years and I, a lot of that has to do with how we are treating our health what we're putting in our bodies and uh maybe our misplaced trust in uh certain industries i think so uh, anyways, it's very interesting to see how you're addressing this in in a in, in using your success stories as a way to uh, you know sell something alternative to uh, the massive pharmaceutical industries and uh, other traditional routes. Yeah, you can show that because we have we have tests, we have a, mm. a test for immune system for everything, and and you can show before and after. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, yeah results. But still, uh, also the health insurances, mm -hmm. you know, they pay this standard therapy mm -hmm. but our even if we are successful they still say after no we don't pay for it yeah, yeah. yeah. even if we can prove it so. and even if it's it's cheaper yeah, yeah. it's cheaper much cheaper uh, it's a uh, it's a boys club up there and they already have their developed relationships and uh, they like the status quo so uh, you guys are shaking things up and that's gonna make some people angry I mean I yeah, imagine. of course <laughs> yeah. um, good on you for disrupting I say <laughs> Uh, now, last question on this topic. I wanted to ask you, what is the most surprising thing that you've learned uh, with uh, your work in integrative cancer care? Mm -mm. That um, I see happy people mm. during the therapy and not people who are completely destroyed in their mind. And, and because uh, uh, some doctors say, oh, if you're not doing that, uh, then you will live another half a year or one year and then you are finished, And which is not true. Nobody can predict when a patient mm -hmm. is dying. And if a doctor tells patients that you are in six months, you are dead, then it, it, he will be dead. Mm. Because that is changes his, his, his mind, and mm -hmm. so we have to give, give hope to, to to everybody, even if it's a, a, a difficult case, and and, uh, and and not make predictions. Yeah, it does seem like that is often what happens, and then there's a, a mental defeat 
uh, when you hear that kind of news and you sort of like, you know, the, the fight it's over yeah. and I kind of yeah. give up. Uh, so yeah, that is very unfortunate. And like you said, it's impossible to predict. You hear stories all the time, like, Oh, they gave me six months and now it's been 20 years and I'm yeah, still yeah. here. So, uh, it's about a positive mindset. Mm. Yeah. And this is also part of what we are doing here, how we communicate mm. with our clients. Mm. That's very, very important. I, myself, I studied also communication skills as part of my master and my doctor degree. Mm -hmm. Because it's so, so, so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are human beings, not car engines, right? <laughs> like, yeah. There's yeah. the whole aspect of that. Yeah. And that's a, that's a great transition to our next topic, which I want to talk to you about this whole mind-body health revolution that's uh, going on right now. Uh, so what do you guys think? Uh, I guess the question I want to ask, how uh, do your brain and your guts dictate your well-being? And why do you refer to this as the, we call it the, the mental health? Cover up, I believe, is what you say. Uh, there is a, a, a very close connection between the the, the gut microbiome mm -hmm. and the gut autonomous nervous system. Mm. That is a very very important, and there is always a crosstalk between the brain and this uh, 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 nervous system in the gut. Mm. And ninety percent are coming from the gut to the brain, and ten percent from the brain to the gut. That is uh, pretty uh, unknown, and so that is so so so. Uh, so problematic because we have uh, for for our depression we have a, a, a couple of reasons. Mm. Of course, if you have a lack of of uh, a certain uh, neurotransmitters, then you can be de depressed. Mm. If the reason is that the the gut microbiome is wrong or you have an inflammation in the gut, mm. then of course they will not produce and that will and not feed your your brain. Mm. The next thing is we need urgently um, a certain uh, short chain fatty acids uh, uh, especially butyrate and which is produced by gut bacteria if they are lacking the brain immune system is switching on inflammation mm. and inflammation is the root of all problems in the body cancer or whatever it's it's always the silent inflammation you have to uh, consider and that is linked with the gut too and there, are, I have a, a brain scans. I saw brain scans, which can, in, in which you can influence um, with certain gut bacteria the the activity of the brain. Mm. So, and that is what what well, that is. Our ancestors knew that they called that a uh, 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 um, gut brain, gut brain, brain <laughs> brain, or <laughs> gut feelings. Yeah. Yes, gut, indeed, gut, gut feelings. feelings indeed. Or yeah, you yeah. take a decision out from your we, we call mm. aus dem Bauch heraus, yeah? from the gut, mm. yeah? from the instinct. Gut. instinct. Yeah. It's like yeah. a kind of instinct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, we all know that. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, 10, 12 years old, <clears throat> I was <clears throat> not the best student, mm -hmm. and we had a test. I was not prepared. I was sitting in school, and suddenly I got stomach pain. Mm -hmm. I was feeling bad. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was because I was not prepared for the test. And then my brain <laughs> showed uh, to the gut a physical reaction. When I was around 20, I started to become a police officer. Mm. Every morning when I drove there, I had stomach problems. I didn't feel good. In the, afternoon, in the afternoon when I left and I drove to the gym, mm. I was good. I felt great. I had the best workout ever. And after a while I realized... This makes me sick. Mm. Yeah. So it was the connection between gut and brain, physical and mental is connected. Mm. We cannot separate this. And yeah. that's we have to tr see and treat the whole person. Mm -hmm. I hear that. Uh, what I wanted to ask, uh, do you guys have any advice about how, uh, you know, in our everyday lives, we can improve this gut health and improve this relationship between the mind and the body? Mm -mm. Yeah, of course. You, if you if you have a, a, a food intolerances, they have to fix that. Mm. You know, that has a big influence mm -hmm. um, because we know a direct influence. If you don't, uh, um, if you cannot uh, digest gluten or casein properly, mm -hmm. they were in the gut. They they are built uh, so called casomorphins or uh, gliadomorphins, which penetrate through the bl blood brain barrier mm -hmm. and go to endorphin receptors and mm -hmm. change the whole uh, the, can change the whole mind and that is uh, in many cases with, uh, with children with uh, ADH mm -hmm. uh, uh, have I that I had that. <laughs> I had that and and I found it out uh, with 50 years 
years and then I checked all my blood and everything and I said, mm -hmm. oh my God, that's exactly you. And uh, so that is uh, 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 one thing. And uh, what did I want to say? What was your question? <laughs> Just in our everyday lives, how can we uh, take uh, yeah, steps yeah, yeah, to improve yeah. it? And like, then, uh, if you have the feeling, if you have a, a lot of diarrhea or or, or the, the the or a constipation, mm -hmm. then uh, it's worth to get the microbiome checked. We have uh, mm -hmm. in the meanwhile we have uh, very good tests. They work with a PCR and can identify thousands of different kinds of mm -hmm. uh, of bacteria. Mm -hmm. And then from this mix, you can see what's wrong. And mm. you can influence it by giving the right uh, uh, probiotics and prebiotics. Mm. Uh, go to to uh, to a diet with a, a lot of fiber, and uh, you can do a lot to yourself. Oh, that's uh, that's fantastic. Uh, so maybe just find out if you are having problems. Find out what is the problem first. What is the problem? If look mm. for the problem and then mm. fix the problem and not the symptom. That is that is mm. the uh, the problem. Our medicine is there to to fix uh, a symptom. Uh, mm -hmm. Headache, headache pill. Uh, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. high blood pressure pill. But mm -hmm. that is not the solution. That mm -hmm. is just, yeah, just su suppressing it for suppressing now. Suppressing it. Yeah, exactly. Make it worse mm -hmm. because of most of these medication again have side effects, mm -hmm. and then you get another problem. Like oh no, you get it's another like, mole. like no, like, <laughs> and then you get a pill against the side effects, mm -hmm. and that has a new side effect. Which has to be treated with a pill, with and so yeah. well. Look, uh, when they when you get three different pills in the hospital, they give you also pantoprazole uh, uh, against acid, mm -hmm. uh, and and that is aut done automatically, even if you don't have any complaints because it's a guideline. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And uh, the pharmaceutical companies make their money. There you go. Of course. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're coming full circle. Well, then uh, I, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit more about the everyday. Uh, mindset thing so how do you guys incorporate mindfulness uh, maybe even uh, meditation into your treatment programs uh, for your patients i think again very important is to see the individual person yeah, yeah. if you are not the right person for let's say breathing exercises or meditation it's mm. very difficult to change mm -hmm. so you have to find out what fits to this patient to this client to this person mm. and I think what is very important for most people is to have some discipline in their life mm. and yeah, get a routine. That's the hard part, isn't it? <laughs> and this is what I see with a lot of people, you know, if you speak with healthy, successful people, they all have a routine. Mm -hmm. they say, I get up early, then I start for a walk, half an hour, then I have my breakfast, then I have this. Yeah, and this is what we need in life. Mm. Yeah, this and consistency. If I say, oh, I want to try to do meditation, it's not if I do this two, three times and then I say, ah, oh, yeah, I'm to fixed. get a change yeah. in your body, yeah. it needs a routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so get up in the morning, have a walk half an hour, 45 minutes. Then after, have a very cold shower to boost your immune system. And then have some nice breakfast, yeah, some mm -hmm. vegetables, have some protein, yeah. I cook every morning, I cook my own breakfast, mm. yeah. And try to build this and, yeah. yeah also, I, very important is, mm -hmm. when are you going to sleep? Mm. Our body and our brain recovers while you are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So if I say I get up early, let's say five, six, I have to look that I sleep maybe at 10, latest mm -hmm. 11, that I get enough hours of sleep and my body and mind can recover. Yeah, building routine is absolutely imperative. I remember uh, when I lived in China, I was uh, I was very young, I think like 22, 23, and I uh, was teaching, but it was piecemeal. So it was not like at a school regularly. I was doing individual classes all over town, all over the place. It was impossible to build a routine and I could feel it taking that toll on my body. And uh, so I, I eventually switched jobs, got a regular position. And all of a sudden I'm going to the gym. I'm, I'm eating better. I'm, uh, I have more of a, a routine built. So yeah. Nowadays, many people have to travel job wise. Mm -hmm. But then I hear, ah, you know, I had to travel to China, Japan, mm -hmm. and I could not go to the gym. 
And I said, yeah, it's a big problem. They have no trims there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> They have trims everywhere like, in the world. <laughs> it's just an excuse. It's just yeah. an excuse. And I don't need a trim to do a workout. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You can do stuff in the hotel room. Right? I, I, I can yeah. use the stairs in the hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And best example is Doc Wes. Mm -hmm. Every day he's walking in the morning, he's walking in the night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he says after work, okay, now I walk another hour. And then he walks an hour. But look at him. Yeah. Th that doesn't come <laughs> from nothing. You know, yeah. that's because of his lifestyle and exercise and routines. I, well, I, I got to get my routine a little bit more in order, I feel like. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, I think it's imperative, too. And I already know this intrinsically. Routines can help you build yeah. a better structure and make sure that like you're, you're going to be getting in shape Your mental health is going to be taken care of and it's predictable too. Like you, you know, it's not, you're not going to surprise yourself with anything because you know what you're going to be doing at every, any given day. Yeah. And, and the, to the, to my routine belongs that I have a little nap in, in, uh, during lunch break mm -hmm. and, and I don't need food, but I, I need my, my, my uh, siesta and uh, siesta <laughs> and uh, just in, in, in Germany, it's just, put my legs on my desk mm -hmm. and close my eyes and woof, I'm off. See? And that is for, for like 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. and then I'm fine. I, I love it. <laughs> and even for <laughs> things that. like this, you know, we have research about this. This is mm -hmm. evidence-based medicine even, mm -hmm. you know. This is not the things that we are saying is, hi, ah, they believe it. No, no. we know the what science. we are talking about yeah. mm -mm. and it works. Well, I, I need more advice from you guys. Uh, well, speaking of uh, that, I, I wanted to ask you, Dr. Andy, you, you've called stress the silent killer that nobody wants to talk about. How does stress uh, affect the, well, obviously the mind, but also the body as well? What is it, uh, the long-term consequences of living a stressful life? Yeah. So if we look now at most people's lives, it is very stressful. But many times the people make it stressful by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some things can wait. Some things I don't have to do now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, we come to the point also routine mm -hmm. planning. Like I said, I'm very early here and I make my schedule for the day and my plans, what I want to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. It does not work like this most of the time, <laughs> yeah. but I try. Yeah. yeah? And If we are in stress mode, mm -hmm. our body reacts. There are normal physiological reactions. And then the body starts working, producing hormones and other mediators, which change our body and have a big impact on our health. Yeah. Mm. Johannes, maybe you want to explain a little bit the reactions. Right of the hormones and cortisone mm -hmm. and yeah uh, if you for everything. example um we have if we have a, a lot of stress uh, our brain thinks there's something wrong outside mm. no babies in this it's it's our brain reacts like in in in, in a reaction which is maybe hundred thousand years old mm -hmm. and says shuts down The hormones for example too and that is in 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 women visible when you have a, 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 an enduring sports women mm -hmm. uh, they lose their their menstrual cycle mm -hmm. and when they go down with under a certain weight mm -hmm. and in men uh, the brain or the pituitary gland shuts off the LH, which is telling the, the, the gonads <laughs> to produce uh, a testosterone. Wow. And so they go into a testosterone, in, in a lack of testosterone, mm -hmm. which makes depression. And so that is uh, closely connected, or you have the cortisol. And if the stress is hard, cortisol go first goes up and then it breaks down. And then we have the burnout. Mm. Uh, and so all the systems shut down one after the other. other. And that can be done exclusively by stress, whatever the, uh, mm. the, the stress is. Mm. Or we know like neck problems. Yeah, it, mm. the, the pressure is, is in your neck. Yeah, mm. you get the pressure from work or whatever. Yeah, and then people start pulling their shoulders up. Mm. Then they get tight here. Then they get joint problems. Make me they think about it now. Irritate <laughs> the nerve system. Yeah? yeah. And then suddenly they have these problems. Mm. And we can fix this. 
but we also have to fix the factor why mm. it started the underlying is issues yeah very often then stress yeah. yeah it seems like it so what do you do you guys have any advice about how people can help to manage their stress uh every day like in you know whether it be meditation exercise or any other little tips and tricks that you guys have so I think it's really important to figure out what is important, what mm. has to be done today and what maybe can wait till tomorrow. Mm. And I see this myself where I, I get this email at 10 in the night and then I think, oh my God, I have to answer this. Mm. And then I think, second thought, no, actually, Do um, <laughs> it can wait till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe I just make a note tomorrow morning, yeah. And then the next morning I'm in the office, and then I answer the email. Mm. Yeah, the, the, uh, the I, world keeps turning. Right? <laughs> the world keeps turning at yeah. eleven at night. My 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 phones shut off automatically in flight mode, and start again at six o'clock in the morning. Mm. So that is setting up boundaries. I think yeah. is very important, yeah. right? That's, and and people have to yeah. learn that in this time, uh, they cannot reach me. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, a special trick for, for my wife and my children, but that's it. Not even <laughs> good friends can can. You're get not going to tell night. the podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, when I go on holidays, yeah. yeah, I still get emails or questions or the team asks me what to do. And so I made a deal with my wife. So every morning I wake up, then I answer the emails mm -hmm. and then... You know, last holiday was in Germany. I did not even change my SIM card. Mm. So I answered the emails in the morning at home and then I leave my phone at home. Mm. And the whole day I have no phone. And then in the nighttime, I check again and I answer what is necessary or mm. what is not necessary. Mm. I don't answer. And it was so crazy, like the social media, the phone. I remember there was a situation after two, three days, we were in a restaurant and my wife had to go to the restroom. Mm. She stood up and automatically I wanted to grab my phone to look mm -hmm. if there is something. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, I don't have my phone. And then I thought, hmm, nice. And then I was <laughs> looking around. After yeah. two and a half weeks, I came back here. Mm. I arrived Saturday, Sunday, a friend said, hey, let's go for lunch. And I left the house without my phone. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> but, you know, we are so used to this, to constantly get information. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, this is all stress. At yeah, the, end. the constant yeah, connection yeah. and the consumption of information is a big part of our modern lives. So it's yeah, important to switch yeah. off. Yeah. So I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on nothing except WhatsApp and email. Ugh. That's it. <laughs> I can't imagine that world. I'm sorry. My whole <laughs> life is social media at this point. But uh, to that end, I want to ask. So I do. Um, I like to do stand-up comedy. Okay. So I, I perform pretty regularly. And for me, that can be a stressful experience, right? Like trying to think about what, what am I going to say and then getting up there. I'm in that situation. However, it's very rewarding. Uh, do you think that there are uh, applications where, where stress can be a, a good thing uh, in, uh, you know, driving you to, to push uh, towards your goals? Uh, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Actually, we know from the science we have this oil stress and distress, so positive and negative stress. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need this a little bit, yeah? And it's normal. We have this, you know, thousands of years ago, we had this fight and flight modus, mm -hmm. yeah? So it's normal for our body, yeah? If the tiger is coming, mm -hmm. we have to fight. Mm -hmm. And that is a stress situation a little bit, yeah? Mm -hmm to survive mm -hmm, and yeah. these are normal reactions of the body which is okay the problem is constant stress mm. that's dangerous yeah uh, that makes sense and i think that's something that's uh different with our modern times like we we're talking exactly. about the constant connectivity uh being able to be reached all the time right so it's important to set up those boundaries and give yourself some time to you know mentally catch up and uh unload i think that's why there's so much uh there's a lot of meditation stuff going on here do you see any uh like what are, what are the benefits of meditating like shutting off and trying to clear your mind and uh, uh what, what are the uh actual physiological benefits of doing that mm. um i don't know what that is hmm? 
I never did meditation because mm. I never learned that, but I don't know really what that is. So for me, my meditation is uh, uh, walking, running. Uh, that is uh, um, that is when, when I, for example, when I, I go in the uh, forest running, mm-hmm. and after I feel that after let's say ten minutes, my brain is on, uh, mm. and then I have a, go- a a lot of good ideas, and if I have a, a to a, a, to make a presentation, I I see the slides and uh, 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 coming. You know, mm. in, in, in in my brain, and mm. that is that is my meditation. I, I I really don't know what what meditation is. Yeah, I I never learned a technique or, or, or something uh, that is for me is move. That is my meditation. Mm-hmm. Mm. This is exactly the answer. You know, there is not one fits it all. We have to see the person and what fits for him. Mm-hmm. And like Doc was said, yeah walking being outside in nature that works for him for me it's if i go to the gym Mm -hmm. and i grab the dumbbell yes that's it that's my life and that's where i can really relax and it's the best meditation for me Mm -hmm. for other it's like breath working meditation it's you cannot say this is better or this it depends on you Mm -hmm. and our big challenge is to find out what is good for you and support you and direct you into the right way. I'll tell you, for me, like meditation is very individual. What I, I have to drive around Bangkok all the time. I'm sitting on the back of motorbikes because I hate sitting in traffic. <laughs> and for me, that's when I like I don't put any headphones in. I just try to like clear my mind and let thoughts happen and things like that. So it can happen anywhere, right? But yep. it's important, I think, to shut down disconnect a little bit and let your brain do some of that processing i think whether it's the walk the gym or just riding around town i think you can get it in in many different ways for sure absolutely well i do want to move on to our next topic and this is something that i think you both probably know a little bit about and that's uh this uh the the new age of aging I think uh, there's all sorts of new uh, uh, anti-aging uh, processes coming out. I want to ask you guys, what do you think? Uh, how do you how do you stay so young, Doctor Wasily? <laughs> because I was uh, a little uh, uh, taken aback. I, I had you at pegged for 20 years younger than uh, oh, oh, well. you are. So uh, yeah, <laughs> what, are, what are some of the secrets yeah, I, and things like that? Uh, I I don't know the secrets. I I'm I'm not living such a. a, 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 a I'm living a normal life. I'm also drinking alcohol once in a while. My friends know that, <laughs> and uh, and uh, but only when I have fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm I'm walking, doing sports, and of course I replace all my hormones. Mm-hmm. I, I I check that regularly, mm-hmm. and of course I check my micronutrients in my blood, and uh, uh, I, I'm taking all all that stuff, mm-hmm. and I think that is already a, a good deal. Maybe um, my genes are also okay. I don't know because um, when I I'm talking about aging, I have two two examples. My aunt, she died short before she was 104. Mm. living by herself absolutely brilliant in her brain and my mother she uh, was 99 when she died in the same influenza wave mm. and but she was had a dementia so um and i checked the blood of my aunt when she was uh, 102 i think mm. and i found that she had a, a, a lot of risk factors mm. for for uh, uh, arteriosclerosis but um, she had still a functioning immune system, uh, 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 a thymus function. She had more stem cells than I found in anybody else with, uh, uh, after 50 uh, who started substituting it. And uh, she had uh, um, the ho- uh, hormones like uh, a woman which is uh, fairly well um, g- gets a hormone replacement therapy. But mm. that was their own hormones still. Naturally. Wow. So, mm. And that was so surprising for me. And I think so uh, um, in anti-aging, the hormones important. Mm. And, and, and that is uh, something for Andy. She was always happy, always mm. laughing. Uh, and she had uh, uh, two world wars, had to flee two times, had five children. One was uh, um, one was um, handicapped, mm. and so. But she was still 
always uh, um, happy. Mm. And I think it's, it's a combination of many things. I don't believe in this, um, you know, they offer you, ah, we have the, found the new uh, uh, drug for, for uh, getting younger, like rapamycin or like uh, quercetin with, uh, with the, the cancer drug. Mm. And those, they promise you, you to, to cut out all the, the, the senescent cells, which we have when we are aging. And I don't believe in a single uh, in, in a single drug. We have to find out the right the right combination to to extend our health span, mm -hmm. Not which is different, <laughs> like from from lifespan, as you can see in in my examples. Mm -hmm. And it will never ever happen that we 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 are getting younger again. Mm -hmm. But we can keep our our shape for a long, long time, and that is what we want to offer. Mm -hmm. And and we have a, a couple of new substances which are also uh, very promising to to fix a part of this problem. Mm -hmm. Because uh, um, if a, a cell goes senescent, there are, we know at least forty proteins which are uh, uh, have to be controlled and fixed, and not the only one you can buy for a lot of money. <laughs> that makes sense. And, and, and all these uh, 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 anti-aging gurus, uh, sometimes they, they look really old. <laughs> like, they, they look well. like like <laughs> like good. like 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 mummies coming out from a, a, a Egyptian pyramid, mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, so I'm wondering either they are already thousand years old, <laughs> or something has failed. Yeah. Yeah, that I, was a little bit mean. I I know, but uh, um, <laughs> but, stick it to but I never believe that that you can get with a couple of 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 drugs, you can buy, you get uh, can extend your lifespan or your mm. health span. You have to do a lot of things, uh, uh, which we mentioned already. Mm. Uh, uh, control your life and and get the right food and get the right microbiome and get, of course, a couple of substances which can help to, mm -hmm. to, to, to fix the, the senescent cells. Mm -hmm. um, but that it will never happen that we go back because most of these uh, 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 research is done in mice, in transgenic mm -hmm. mice that is a, has nothing to do with real life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like that you is, show uh, it not, in the lab. Yeah, but, yeah. Not, not even normal mice. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Just especially and so <laughs> don't don't be too extreme mm -hmm. you know then people sometimes they are then getting too extreme mm -hmm. oh, i only eat this i only do this and like doc i said yeah sometimes drink alcohol yeah sometimes i eat a pizza mm -hmm. sometimes i drink alcohol because it's also of part of having fun it's enjoyment right? life, yeah, yeah, yeah? Of course. Mm -hmm. and these are important things. Mm. Yeah? So look after your nutrition, look after your exercises, be happy mm. in a normal way. Don't get too extreme. Well, the, the way you guys are talking about it, I just want to I want to share with you a, a personal story of mine, because my grandfather was on my mother's side. Uh, my grandmother was on my father's side. There's only two grandparents that I knew. The other two died before I was even born. Uh, they both lived to about the same age, though, almost like late 80s or, or mid 80s, I think, something like that. However, their quality of life for the entire time that I knew them was completely different. Yeah. My grandmother was basically, she stayed in one place. She didn't like to travel around. And she, like, you know, from 60 to, to 80, she was, you know, she, she felt like an old lady. You know what I mean? And my grandfather, uh, by comparison, he would travel with us. He would go skiing. He would go uh, and, and, you know, enjoy life. He was always traveling around uh, America, very much, much more health conscious, always working out. And you know, he could do all of those things that my grandmother could not. Now, lifespan, about the same, but the quality of that life. That is what I say. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, mm. you know, my parents both died very young mm. and they lived very, very unhealthy. Mm. And for me, it was from small on. I don't want this way of life. Mm. Yeah. And I think this is still in my head. I don't want this. Mm -hmm. I want to live a little bit longer. But most of all, I want to enjoy life. You only live once. Mm -hmm. Enjoy Yolo, it. The kids yeah. and, yeah. and the social life is so important. I can tell you, my mother, I think uh, one reason for her dementia was she, she was living in Switzerland in the mountains mm -hmm. together with my father. And so as long as she could command my father, so she was, <laughs> she was fit. And then he, he died when he was 80 already. Mm -hmm. And um, then she was 
quite alone there. And, and I asked her, do you like this life? Uh, oh, yes, I do, but I ha didn't have my knowledge of today. Mm. I would never have allowed that, that she is living there alone in a little village with eight, eight inhabitants. <laughs> yeah. and, and she didn't go to church anymore, which was before very important for her. Mm -hmm. And so she cut off all the social life. And that, mm. was, that was the, the killer. Mm. That, that's, I'm, I'm quite sure. That's a very fascinating thing. Yeah. Like we are social creatures, right? Yeah. Like this is uh, absolutely key to our evolution, our development, and uh, now, of course our mental health. Uh, which has that direct effect on the rest of our health, too. Of course, mm. of course. It, it's so interesting because just in Germany, they made a new research and for dementia and how to avoid it. And one of the key aspects was social life. Mm. Yeah? yeah, it's so, so, so important. Yeah, and this is... So every once in a while you get that beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. And sitting together with friends and, and, and laughing and, and, and yeah, so that is and, and have a beer together. Mm. That is that is social life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, that's why I do my comedy. I'm always having a, a drink and going out and having a laugh with everybody. And uh, hopefully that translates to some uh, <laughs> better benefits. physiological. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, uh, anyways, uh, now I, I want to ask you guys, so you're you're just in town for a little bit here, Dr. Wasoli. You're here until uh, August 24th, I yes, believe. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, how, how can uh, people who are interested in uh, the, the services and healthcare, uh, you know, that you guys are providing here at Miskawan, uh, how can they access and have a conversation with you while you're here in town? Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we have a, a three, uh, three events. Mm -hmm. Here in the clinic, I will have, a, and uh, together with Dr. Andy, uh, we will have a little speech about different uh, topics. Mm -hmm. The one will be, of course, senescence, cancer, because senescence and cancer is not far away from each other. Mm. And uh, then we have one session, it's more about uh, mitochondria, which is also a very uh, uh, important thing. Mm -hmm. And one is gut health and, and brain health. And so we have, have different topics. And then we will introduce the, the topics and then people can ask, ask us whatever they want. Mm. Yeah, so mm. Dr. Wesley is here till 24th mm. and we have these events on the 8th mm -hmm. of August um the 15th <laughs> of august and the 20th of august and yeah beside that he's always available for consultations so mm -hmm. you can always contact us on our website miss kavan health and miss kavan health bangkok instagram or facebook so it's very easy to find us and get in touch with us mm -hmm. yeah don't worry that'll be in the description everybody check the description below if you want to check that out and see the the dates and of course how you can get in touch with these guys to uh get your consultation and live uh, a, a better and healthier life so come meet the masters and uh improve your health everybody um now uh, uh for new patients what can they expect during their first visit coming to miss mm-hmm well, they have a, a lot of time to talk first, mm -hmm. and I listen mm -hmm. uh, uh, what they are talk, talking about. Because a patient who is coming in and has five minutes, he will be so so uh, uh, under stress and for, forgets what he wants to, to, to ask. We don't make this stress. You have all the time you need to, to get rid of your problems, mm -hmm. uh, even uh, what, of problems you you wouldn't say there are problems, but if after a talk, then maybe it, it comes in your mind, ah, oh, there's something else. Mm -hmm. And then we will suggest a, a, a diagnostic. Mm -hmm. And from this diagnostic, we will make a plan, a medication plan. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so full it's approach. really about listening and asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. This is also really, we are not asking the standard questions duh, 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 mm -hmm. and tick the box. Check, check. Yeah. No. This is about getting to know each other, mm -hmm. building a relationship. And based on that, then the doctor will say, oh, we need this blood test. We need this test. Mm -hmm. That is now important. I think that's what's beautiful about what you guys are doing here. You're still, of course, relying on the scientific basis of everything that you're doing. But at the same time, you're approaching each patient as an individual. Uh, with individual needs, individual problems, rather than, like you said, ticking the boxes and going through the guidelines of what uh, would normally be done, I guess, in more, uh, you know, bigger syst systems. Um, so this more personalized approach is going to have uh, better results, I imagine. <clears throat> 
Um, now, uh, before we wrap up, I just want to ask, uh, are there any other major takeaways? Like, uh, if, we, if you want to wrap everything up uh, about your philosophy, about what you guys are trying to do here, uh, let our viewers know, please. <clears throat> so, of course, that is the advice I give to, to, to doctors. Don't treat symptoms, treat people. Mm. Keep it simple. Well, yeah. I think very important is to start as early as possible. Don't wait till mm. you are sick. Don't wait till you have problems. Mm. I'm now doing a program since one year that I go a lot to schools. Mm -hmm. And I speak there in the school about healthy lifestyle, nutrition, exercise, just to educate the kids yeah, and the parents. But most people nowadays, they wait till they are sick, till mm -hmm. they feel something. But we can find out much earlier what is going wrong into your body. Even, for example, with cancer, we have tests, early cancer detection tests, mm -hmm. where we can find out the earliest stage and then it's mostly quite easy to fix the problems. Yeah. So prevention is maybe also a key factor. Mm. I, I think that's absolutely a, an amazing takeaway because, yes, the, it's so much easier to prevent than it is to treat, I think, in the end. And uh, at the end of the day, too, uh, while coming and, and uh, engaging in your services is going to help everybody a lot, but it's up to them to have the impetus to actually come and uh, make sure that they are, you know, looking after themselves how they should be. And that uh, that starts very early. For example, I give newborn babies already probiotics because uh, uh, normally uh, uh, that that is uh, the start to avoid allergies and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, and you cannot be sure that the mother has a good microbiome and gives it to the to the child. You better fix the problem before it occurs. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it, it starts early. Never too early, apparently. Never too early. Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, I got to say, thank you guys so much for, for sitting down and having a chat with me today. Dr. Vasoli, Dr. Andy, I've learned so much. And uh, I, I personally feel I am going to be taking my health much more seriously. And uh, yeah, I, uh, we'll see how you guys can fix me up a little bit later. Too. Looking forward <laughs> to see you next week. Yes. You can make an appointment. Uh, don't worry, well, I'm signing up. Don't you guys worry. Uh, any uh, last words before we go? Oh, yeah. No, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It was very nice, and mm -hmm. that was perfect. All right, guys, uh, everybody come and check out Miskawana Clinic. It's right here in Bangkok. So easy to sign up and uh, really uh, just get to know yourself uh, by uh, coming and engaging in these services. Listen to these guys and uh, as they listen to you and understand your problems. So thank you very much. both. Thank of you, you very much. Cool. Thank All right. You.